Um, so glad to be here and I'm so glad you came. Um, I am so blessed uh, to be able to stand here this morning. Uh, can you believe the year is about to end? <laughs> it seems like it just, it just uh, started. Um, of course, there has been some challenges that has, you know, made it seem kind of long and everyone was like, can't wait for it to get here. But um, I'm so thankful that we are all here at the end of 2020. Um, thankful for those who uh, heard Pastor and did turn on their camera this morning. Um, it's, it's a sense of uh, encouragement when we can see that you are there um, and that you're not there for namesake, but that you are actually behind uh, that little block with your name in it. So we appreciate some people do come on and have to work, but those who are not working, um, I want to encourage you when pastor uh, asks something of you uh, to, to, to do what he asks. You know, sometimes we make, may make it a little bit hard, um, but it's really not that hard. It really is. It really isn't that hard. Um, Hebrews 13 and 17 says, Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch over your souls as they must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. So this is a scripture in Hebrews and I'm doing one of pastor's things. This is just the, that little tidbit. This is extra. This is in the front. You know, you want to be blessed. If you want to be blessed, receive the prophet as a prophet, not as Johnny down the street. If you want the Johnny down the street blessing, then you go ahead and get the Johnny down the street. But I don't know about you. I want the prophet's reward. I want that, that reward that's going to come straight from heaven. And it comes when you can obey what God has asked you to do and what your pastor has asked you to do this morning and all throughout the year. Amen. Amen. That was for free. That was for free. Listen, uh, turn to Genesis 3 and 9. This is a very short scripture, but this is going to be the start of the message for today. Amen. Genesis 3 and 9. It says, then the Lord called to the man. Where are you? That's it. That's, that's it. Then the Lord called to the man. Where are you? Now, did God lose Adam? Did he not know where Adam was? Think about that. He asked Adam, where are you? This question from God, the one who sees all and knows all, this was not one of natural location. God wasn't wanting to know where in the garden Adam was. He wanted to know where in the spirit Adam was. This was a spiritual location that God was looking for. And he was doing, he's asking this question, not so that he would know where, spirit, where, where Adam was spiritually, because God knew where Adam was spiritually. He formed him. He, he created him. He knew spiritually where he was. But this was a question of reflection for Adam. He wanted Adam to take time to reflect. He wanted him to verbalize where he was. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Branch family, where are you? Wilson family, where are you? Debbie, where are you? He brings it all the way down to make it personal to us. Where are you? He wants to have that dialogue just as he did with Adam, just as he wanted to have that dialogue, he wants to have that dialogue with us. He wants to know, where are you? First Corinthians 11 and 28 says, let a person examine himself. Then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. This is showing that there is time for examining. We have to examine ourselves. Psalms 139, 23, and 24, David, David said, search me, God, and know my heart. 
Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Once again, he's reflecting, pondering, seriously thinking about it. Let's take a moment and pray. Father, as we, as we deliver the last word on a Sunday night, a Sunday morning, that you have, you have prepared for us. Father, we, I just pray that you will use me as your instrument and that I will speak only your words, speak only your heart and your thoughts. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So coming into um, 2020, January 2020, um, January 3rd, pastor delivered a clear vision of what God was saying to the branch. And those of you who are on, say it with me, gather together, grow together, and go together. Amen. That was the word God gave us. And Amen. just before pastor delivered that word, he gave a prophetic word. Okay, now this goes back to that prophet's reward. When you see it as prophetic coming straight from God, you can grab that for yourself and walk it out. This was the word that God gave. He said, the spirit says, now listen real carefully to these words. And, and, and we're gonna just kind of reflect on how this year went, okay? This was the word. First Sunday in January is that the spirit says minimize the distractions for you and your family that will slow you down and stop you from doing what God has for you to do. He later admonished, put aside every weight. And, and he said this this morning, he doesn't realize he said this already at the beginning of the year, and he's now saying it about it going into 2021, he said, and don't take 2019 distractions into 2020. That was a word from God. And it was a warning and an admonishment. Wake up. You were distracted in 2019. Don't take it with you in 2020. Draw the line. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In so many words, God was preparing us. He knew what we were about to face. He knew about the pandemic. He knew about the fires. He knew about the hurricanes. He knew about the riots. He knew about the political battle, the loss of lives. He knew it. And he gave us that warning. He said, don't be distracted. Accomplish the mission. Where are you? Where are you? So when we stop and reflect, where are you? In regards to this word that God gave us. 2020, a year to gather together, grow together, and go together. To do what? To do good works. We've had so many opportunities this year to gather together. We had drive-in services, Zoom services, Sunday school on Zoom, Bible studies, kids' church, men's meetings, women's meetings, and we had even had a prayer line. All these avenues to gather together. Some services we even had in person socially distanced with masks and thermometers. We had all that stuff lined up just so that we could gather together. Gather means to forsake not to assemble yourselves together. Pastor emphasized that day, no more excuses. We were to gather, we were to grow, grow spiritually mature, put into action the teachings by gathering, gathering 
coming to the table, ready to eat. Did you gather? If you don't gather, you can't grow. You can't convince me that if you don't gather, you can't grow. So gathering in the sense of, of if you can have a plant and you take that plant and if you don't water it and you don't feed it, I can promise you, I mean, I can promise you, I could, I, if I was a betting person, I would bet you that that plant would not make it a year. So why is it that we think that if we don't gather, gather is where the, we get the water of the word, we get the food, the spiritual nourishments, the encouragement and connection through that gathering. How do you think you're going to grow? How are we going to grow if we don't gather? And if we don't grow, we can't go. And when we say go, we're saying out of the four walls. We're saying out of our house, out of our car, out of the church building, go out. Find ways to go out. Well, how do we go out? There was a pandemic going on. We have done, like I said, so much virtually. There's so much ministry. You go where the people are. The people are virtual. You can go to the virtual instead of ranting and posting everything that you see someone else post that is ungodly. You could post what God is doing in your life. We were so blessed this morning in family school with the testimonies. It was awesome to see if we could put those testimonies where, where the souls are, people are hurting, people are dying without Jesus. We have to go out the four walls to, what, what is our mantra? The branch mantra is to bring, meet needs, to bring hope and meet needs. Are we bringing hope? Are we meeting needs? This is globally. Globally means here and everywhere else. Starting at home and going everywhere else. Even to the point where we live our lives in such a way that people are coming to you to ask you a question. Why do you smile all the time? Why do you have such peace when you're just walking through this? They'll come to you because you're living that and you can reach out to others outside of your home. The emphasis is on the go. But like I said, in order to go, you have to grow. And in order to grow, you must gather. Pastor asked the question that day. He said, uh, he said, who's ready to go out to the streets and bring the souls in? And I'm going to tell you, everyone that was in the room that day was like, we are ready. I mean, it was like a chant. It was full. Everyone was like, we are ready. Where are you? Where are you? Did you gather? Be honest. Reflect. This is reflection. I'm not pointing any fingers. I'm not pointing to calling out any names. Just stop for a second and reflect. Did you gather? Did you grow? Did you go? What distracted you? What caused you to slow down and to stop? God wants to know where are you? As the year progressed in March, March the 1st to be exact, Pastor Todd on how important it is to grow. He asked the question, where's your fruit? Where's your fruit? And he said this, he said, no seed, no fruit. I thought he had it backwards, you know, I was trying to think, no, it's no fruit, no seed. But the seed is when you gather. And when you gather, you grow and you have fruit. That fruit then has seed. And that's how it goes out throughout the world. 
he was talking about how important it is for us to grow. When we receive the word, we receive the word of God, the word of God is the seed. He said, it causes you to walk through um, growth. In fact, there's five stages. And of course, Pastor added a few more. <laughs> but the five stages that he first gave was babyhood, then childhood, then teenhood, young adulthood, and then adulthood. And this was based off, and you can write this down because I'm not going to go to the scripture because I have a lot of scriptures that I'm going to cover today. But write down 1 Corinthians 13, 11. And 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. That talks about our spiritual growth and what that means. You know, as a baby, a baby is bad, 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 goo, 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 gaga. They don't say too much that you can understand, that is. <laughs> Some babies can babble all day long. You know, they just babble, 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 babble. You know, but the scripture says, but when I grew up, I put away childish things. I didn't play the tricycle anymore. I didn't, you know, I didn't lay up in, in, the, in the crib anymore once I grew up. And he was admonishing us. We have to get through those stages. You have to grow up. There was something here that I was looking for, but I don't see it. Maybe it'll come up somewhere else. But there are two, sta there are two things when, in regards to, oh, there it is. If you want to get somewhere, okay, to get anywhere, you must know two things, okay? And we're still reflecting on this past year. I, I'm hoping somebody knows what those two things were. I don't see a hand, so no one remembers those two things. There's two things if you want to get to know, to get to get anywhere. When we're talking about growth. One, you have to know where you are. And you have to know where you want to go. So you can want to go somewhere all you want. You can sit there and say, boy, I really want to go to the store. You showed up in a new community. You go on vacation. I don't know about you, but when we go on vacation, we normally like to go to the grocery store to get some groceries for our hotel room. You know, so we can sit there in the hotel room and say, man, I want to go to the store. I want, to, I want to go to the store. Well, first of all, you're going to have to find out where you're at on the map, right? And then you're going to have to figure out where you want to go. Where is the store? Where is that going? That's part of the reflection of knowing. If I want to grow to here, then first of all, I have to be honest and I have to know where am I? Where am I? And then where do I want to go? So that a plan can be put in place to walk that out. March 24th, Pastor spent some time talking about the go. And Elder Anthony at that time shared a very timely devotion called Make a Move. And I encourage you to go back to the band. If you type that in, you should be able to find it. That was a very timely message. And it coincided with the word that God had been impressing on our pastor. Get on board. God told him, you are so consumed with trying to make people get on board that you're going to miss the train. There are people at the next station waiting for you. And then he said that God told him either move the train or I'll move it. If people don't want to get on board, go to the hedges and the highways and compel them to come. Pastor pleaded with us that day. He kept saying, get on board, get on board. He didn't want to leave anybody behind. Y'all know pastor, he's not going to leave nobody behind. He will worry you and don't mind that he's worrying the very hair off your head. <laughs> he will worry you. Because he doesn't want to see anyone lack. He doesn't want to see anyone left behind. And he was constantly telling us, woo, woo, all aboard. Get on board. Where are you? Where are you? 
in regards to that message, where are you? Do you see where we're going? We're just walking through the year. We're walking through the year because the table was set. The feast of the Lord was sure going on. We had the feast of the Lord all year long. We had so many opportunities to get ready, get set, grow. We had the opportunities to grow. All we had to do was gather and the food, the table was set, the food was here. So I'm excited because I know at the end of 2020, you know, we, we must be ready. We, cause we, cause we've been feasting, we've been feeding, we've been sitting at the table. So I know, I know we're ready, right? At the end of March, pastor began a series on Tuesday nights. It was called Cultivating Community. Cultivating Community. Y'all remember that one? Many of you had the opportunity to share with a partner regarding what the Bible says about gathering together as a community, cultivating that community with one another. For some, it was a great experience. For others, it was a bit challenging. But for all, it was a learning and growing experience, whether you want to believe it or not. We learned, we learned some things that were in us. And that's what God wants. He wants us to come up. He, he's, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. He wanted us to be in a position where maybe we were just a little bit irritated. Sometimes we irritated ourselves and sometimes the other person irritated us. But God was growing us through that. He was teaching us. He was teaching us to learn how to speak the truth and love, to respond with his heart. You know, those are things that we learned by cultivating community. Let me share the scriptures. Philippians 2, 1 through 5. I'm just waiting. Make sure everyone has it. Philippians 2. One through five. And hopefully somebody's putting the scriptures in the chat. Amen. Philippians 2, 1 through 5. This is a scripture that was shared during that time. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Wow. Where are you? Where are you in regards to learning these learning growing points? In every lesson and every sermon, God had something he desired for us to catch. Somewhere for us to grow. In every lesson, take a moment and and think about it. What did I learn from some of the hardest things that I've gone through this year? The lessons. What have I learned? Remember, he, he foreknew. He, he, he already knew what was coming down, down the line. He already knew. He set us up to shine through all of those experiences. Did we shine? Did, challenge, did this challenging year cause us to stand up and stand out as a light showing forth Jesus in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of race riots, in the midst of a very ugly political battle? Did you show up? 
and shine forth, Jesus? Where are you? I'm just going to leave it there for a second, get a sip of water. I'm going to turn down this computer. There we go. Well, let's fast forward a little bit. For the next couple of quarters, Pastor did a very serious set of messages, admonishing, almost pleading with us. And he said, stop sinning. Remember that? Stop sinning. He kept saying, stop sinning. That was Ezekiel 3, 26 and 31. The scripture really puts things in perspective. He said, son of man, let me give it to you one more time. Ezekiel 3, 26 through 31. He said, son of man, I have appointed you as a watchman for Israel. Whenever you receive a message from me, warn people immediately. If I warn the wicked saying you are under the penalty of death, but you fail to deliver the warning, they will die in their sins. And I will hold you responsible for their deaths. If you warn them and they refuse to repent and keep on sinning, they will die in their sins, but you will have saved yourself because you obeyed me. We have the uh, responsibility to tell you the truth. Uh, when, I, when we started out today, you might have felt some kind of way because I told you to obey your leadership. I was going according to the word. Obey your leadership. Your pastor asks you to do something, you do it. Or if there's a problem, you communicate to him, you know, that, that there's, an, there's an issue. This goes along with that, that he has appointed us as watchmen. And he's holding us responsibility, responsible to teach and to train you, to build you up, to, to, to uh, tell you when you're wrong, when you're sinning, to say, stop sinning. This next part of the scripture really speaks to the church. Because you can look at it and say, oh, well, that was people who didn't know God. Oh, really? Listen to this. It says, "Righteous, if righteous people, righteous, people in right standing with God, okay? If righteous people turn away from their righteous behavior and ignore the obstacles I put in their way, he's, he's, he's putting obstacles to keep us from going the wrong direction. But we, they want to go around those obstacles, then they will die. And if you do not warn them, they will die in their sins. None of their righteous acts will be remembered. And I will hold you responsi responsible for their deaths. But if you warn righteous people not to sin and they listen to you and do not sin, they will live and you will have saved yourself too. Woo! That is powerful. That is powerful. That was Ezekiel 3, 17 through 21. God was speaking straight to us saying, we got to tell the word, stop it. Stop that sin. Stop it. You're a righteous man. You're a righteous woman. You're righteous. You, you got to do better than that. It is our responsibility to do that. It's time out. It's time to get on the right side. You remember when Pastor talked about that? Time to get on the right side. We don't want to be keep walking on the wrong side. We think we're straddling the fence. We think we we think we in between. Got one foot in heaven, one foot in hell. We think that, right? But Alyssa told us, <laughs> I'll never forget that this year. She said. Satan owns the fence. So you can straddle the fence all you want, but Satan owns the fence. You're not, you're not one way. The Bible says either be uh, hot or cold. 
He said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. I don't have anything, anything to do with you. 2 Timothy 2.22 admonishes us, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the compassionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. Sister Trinity said that this morning. She was talking about how when we gather together, how it strengthens us, it, it encourages us because we hear each other's testimony. We see what God has done for somebody else. It's important for us to be with those who call him Lord. The, you know, even down to what we listen to, music, and, and there's so many things, TV programs and stuff like that, and, and we can grab this or grab that, but when we indulge in that constantly, constantly, we've got all kinds of stuff in us, coming in us, that, that is not going to encourage us in the Lord. It's not going to encourage us to stop sinning. In fact, there's certain uh, there's a certain uh, singer who sings... Uh, he, he sings secular music, and I always enjoyed his music. But after uh, after I got married, I won't listen to it anymore because how I found those songs were with somebody else. I was with somebody else, as innocent as it might have been. I was with somebody else. I was connected with somebody else with that song, with those, with that music. And so I refused to allow myself to listen to that music because if I hear that song, it came back to the memories. And a lot of times we're entertaining the very thing that takes us back down the road to that one spot. And we can't understand, how did I get here again? It's what we were allowing to be in our ears and in our eyes that allowed us to go back. But God says, run from that. Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pure, righteous, living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Philippians 4, 8 and 9 says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Do you remember this message? Fix your thoughts. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me everything you've heard from me and saw me do. Then the God of peace will be with you. I like that word fix. Fix your thoughts. And I thought about how there's actually two meanings, but both of them work. Fix in the sense of something is broken and you need to fix it. Put it back together again. You got to work on it. Okay. Make it work. How do you make it work? By putting your thoughts on everything that is true, honorable, right, pure, and lovely and admirable. And then the word fix means to fix in the sense of put your mind on and don't allow it to move. When you fix something to a wall or fix something to, to whatever, you're, you're making sure that that thing won't move from where you have it. And we have to learn to fix our thoughts on those things, even though it wants to deviate, even though it wants to move, we want our thoughts to be fixed on what is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. Now, Paul talked here where he said, put, your, put into practice all that you've learned and received from me. We could say that too. Put into practice. Pastor has been giving all this stuff all year long. These are things that he talked about. These are things he preached about. These are things that he ran around the room and stood on top of chairs <laughs> just to get it across to us. Put it in in action, put it in our lives, put it, put it to work, then the God of peace will be with you. 
a lot of times I think I, I've heard you guys say, oh, well, it's because you're a pastor, you know, y'all supposed to be that way. No, it's all part of our growth. We all are striving to do that. We weren't there overnight, believe me. It's, you know, I was nine years old when I started the road. So it, it took some time. Growth takes time, but we have to put our minds on it. We've got to get in, fix ourselves to what God has for us to do. So where are you? In regards to that word, where are you? How's your thoughts? How's your walk? And this last part of the year, God had been speaking to the pastor about what will help us walk out, gather together, grow together, and go together. He's been talking about being filled. He wants us to be constantly filled. Filled. He shared about the three baptisms, the baptism in Christ, which is our salvation, the baptism in water, which is the outward sign of what God is doing on the inside, and the baptism with the Holy Spirit with power. Amen. This was a promise that was given to us, um, Acts 1 and 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That was the global, there you go, globally, right? They say in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other parts of the earth. So we can say, you know, right here on uh, Honey Rock Circle, here in Huntsville, here in the United States, and the whole world. That's, that's our mission. But he said, you need to be full of the spirit. You need to be full. They say full of it. Yes, full of the Holy Spirit. Where are you? Are you still walking it out? Are you still asking God every day to fill you for the day? To cause you to be full of the Holy Spirit? Do you still have that desire to be full of the Holy Spirit, to walk and have everything that God has promised you? Or did you, did you, are you looking at it that, oh, well, this didn't happen or the signs didn't come, so forget it, that's not gonna work for me. He wants us to be full of his Holy Spirit. It was a gift that God gave us. Where are you? Now, the last pa uh, message that pastor spoke uh, so far this year, of course, he will have words for us on Thursday night. Um, we know pastor speaks all the time um, in family school. If you don't watch, if you don't pull his tail, he'll teach it. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to teach. If you say good morning, he's going to preach a sermon. But this was a specific message that he spoke um, December the 6th. And he said, God gave him just one word. And this word for me summed up the whole year. And the word was discipline. Discipline. We must have Discipline. Now, when we say discipline, we ain't talking about get the strap out, <laughs> get to go home, we all, we're going to give somebody a good beating. No. Discipline in the sense of we must participate with the Holy Spirit. We have to, dis we have to um, discipline or participate with what God is trying to do in our lives. 1 Timothy 4 and 7, um, 7 and 8. 1 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. But refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For boldly exercise, bodily exercise, and someone was talking about that this morning, 
bodily exercise profiteth little. Okay? But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of which is to come. We have to discipline ourselves. Spiritual discipline. There's spiritual discipline and there's self-discipline. And we all know self-discipline, you know, because how many times did you open your mouth to say something and went, Oop. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> That's, that is uh, our self-discipline. We self-discipline ourselves. There's a spiritual discipline. Acts 24 and 16 says, and here and I do exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. A lot of times we say, we're not going to offend God. I'm not going to do that because that would offend God, but I'll offend him. I'll offend my own brother. I'll offend my own sister. I just had to give him a piece of my mind. To have always a conscience void of offense. It should never be our intentions to offend. We have to be disciplined. Look at this. God wants us to succeed. And his plan for us is that we will succeed. Y'all remember that? Jeremiah 29, 11. He wants us to succeed. That's his plan, that we succeed. But there are 14 disciplines for Christians. And again, I think Pastor X added a couple extra. <laughs> but there are 14 disciplines to help us walk this discipline out. They're spiritual disciplines. We need these spiritual disciplines to be in our life, to be an effective Christian to be that one that others want the answer or coming to for answer saying, why do you do this? Or how did you do that? You want them to be able to come to you. That's, that's a part of sharing throughout the world. These 14 disciplines are things that we need to have in place. 14 disciplines, prayer. We all knew that. We all knew that the question was asked this morning, are we, do we have a consistent prayer life? Is there something consistent? Well, let me tell you, if you're one that say you consistently pray every day for five minutes or one minute, or you're one that says, I pray about maybe once a month or when I, or when I need something, or that's not a consistent. You're more consistent if you pray one minute every single day for the rest mm -hmm. of your life. <laughs> he wants a consistent communication with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to hear your heart. He, yes, he knows what's in your heart. He knows what's in your mind. He knows what you're facing. He knows that, but he wants to, He wants you to bring it to him. He wants that time of prayer. Worship. We often think worship is just the slow song after the two fast ones. But worship is what we saw in family school this morning, Sister Brenda. That was worship. She, she got so caught up in worship, she had to jump out from her chair and run across the room, you know, because she just had, she had to go ahead and get it in. Worship is more than just singing a slow song. Worship is that devotion, giving of your heart to God and letting him know what he is in, in your life. Like, Lord, I love you. Thank you. Bless your name for you are so worthy. We're pouring out our heart to him. We need to have worship in our life. Repentance. Repentance. That time of forgiveness. That time of going before God. I'm sorry, Lord. I messed up. I spoke to them wrong. I came at them the wrong way. My attitude was wrong when I responded. Those are times that we need in our life, repentance every day. Sometimes it's just from being slothful, lazy, lazy. 
And, you know, a lot of people said that COVID has made us lazy. It, and it has, you know, you know, <laughs> some of us dress half, you know, <laughs> we just put on a shirt. Some of us don't even, we keep our pajamas on, half, half comb our hair and show up or just turn off the camera. It's like, and we're chilling. We got our feet up on the bed and we got our coffee and we munching on our food. You know, we're, we're no, there's no longer that time of understanding that, yeah, we're on Zoom. We're coming before the Lord. We're offering him. We're giving him something. What are you get? What's on the plate? Where are you? Where are you? After 2020 is gone and you look back, where are you? Bible memorization. My mother puts me to shame. My mother is 81 years old. And I've never seen a woman that has put to, to memory more scripture than she has. I mean, every time she comes on, it's like she just begins this, this, this quote scripture. But I'm going to tell you what the purpose is. Not the purpose isn't just uh, to say, well, I can memorize the whole chapter of this and that. The purpose is a lot of times when you're in a situation difficult situation, you're able to say, I look into the hills which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. It ministers back to you. It reminds you who you are and what we have. When you're weak, you can remember that we can mount up with wings as eagles. We were walking up get weary, we will run and not faint. That comes from memory, from scripture memorization, putting the word in our heart. When we're faced with that sin and we wanna do it again, we can remember thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew the right spirit within me. The purpose of scripture memorization is the putting the word in you so that you can walk through that tough time when you lose your job, when you lose a family member, when you lose your house. There's a young man that we, our family knows and this week during Christmas, during Christmas, he and his wife had poured a lot of money into this one little apartment complex. And they were so excited. They were putting nice stuff in there for people to move in. And, and they were going to have this nice, you know, nest egg. It would bring income to the family. But yet, you know, it was a home for somebody who needed it. And it was finished. And it burned to the ground. It's in those times when life just doesn't make sense anymore. If we don't have something in us, if we don't have the word in us, we have nothing to grasp onto, nothing to hold on to. Praise and thanksgiving. Learning how to give God praise and to be thankful for what he has given us. I can't say enough about that. You know, God gives us things. He gives us good jobs. He gives us good friends and family. And, you know, he gives us food. And we take it so for granted. We don't even take time to thank him. We sit down and eat. Just, just you know, for granted. But there are those who don't have anything to eat. Who are just trying to make it for the next meal. Thanksgiving is such a wonderful thing. Someone gives you something to be thankful for that. It's amazing. It's amazing how unthankful we can be sometimes. Me too. I have to stop sometimes and think, did I thank them for that? 
we have to practice thanksgiving, generosity, generosity, give. And, and that's not just uh, give what other people have, <laughs> but giving. Uh, this Christmas, some uh, people had donated some gifts and we were able to get them and give them out to people who needed them. But there was a point in that, all that giving, where I felt, even though I was spending the time putting it together and stuff, that I wanted to give too. I'm like, I wanted to give from me. There's a difference. It feels great giving to somebody, something that belongs to somebody else, but it is powerful when you give of something that belongs to you. And I, it is addictive, I'm gonna tell you. When I started to give, then I started looking around. What else, what else am I not using? What else can I give away? What, and there were certain things that's like, oh no, I wanted to keep that. Well, <laughs> I said, okay, I'm gonna give that. I'm gonna give that. You know, it was addictive. You just wanna keep giving and keep giving. And God wants us to have that discipline in our life, being able to let go of things we even like. Giving it to someone else. Sometimes the other persons are, are gonna um, be in need. And yeah, that's blessing. Sometimes they're not in need. He just wants you to give it. You don't know why he wants you to give it. He just wants you to give it. Confession. We're to confess to him and we confess one another. And the reason why we confess to one another is because our, that partner, that other person is going to help pray us through. I have a confession. I have something that, that, that I want to share with you. And, and confession is twofold. Confession can be confessing uh, our, what the Bible says, confess your sin, your faults one to another. And, and then we, we pray together and we believe God and that, that partner is, is helping you walk through and, and um, keeping you accountable. But there's also a confession with the lips. Sometimes we just need to confess, confess the, the word over our, our house, speak the word over our house, speak the word over our family. It's not that we see it, but we can call them. That's, that's my daughter. She is a powerful daughter. She is a powerful daughter in the, in the Lord. I can see her speaking the word of the Lord. That's, that's my daughter right there. That's my son. He's a mighty man of Balaam. He's a mighty man that stands up and speaks the truth. It may not look like it, but that confession, we're confessing what God says, what God sees. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. Rest. Rest was one of the uh, disciplines that we rest. Some of us are better at doing that than others. But, <laughs> but we need rest. We have to be disciplined to take that time and say, nope, I, I'm not, not going to do that. There were always you know, we could always be doing something. Sometimes people call me and say, hey, are you busy? And I'm like, I will always be busy. <laughs> but I can discipline myself to say, oh, okay, nope, I'm not busy. Right now, I, I get, you got my undivided attention. But we have to rest because this body is from here. We don't run around in, in, in heavenly bodies. We won't get those until we take our leave from here. So we have to take care of what God gave us. And if we don't rest, and that's what's in the, the manual, okay? Here's the body. This body needs this much rest on a daily basis. So you have to give it what it needs. That's a discipline. Service, doing unto others, getting your hands dirty. Um, when, when pastor calls and says, uh, we need to do such and such, Let's clean the building. That, that's a service. That's discipline to go do something that you don't like to do. I mean, if you don't like to clean at home, who wants to clean the building, right? Um, but if you don't mind, then you go, oh, I don't mind, I, I don't, I don't mind cleaning. I'll, I'll do it. You know, there's an area for everyone. Everyone can take a part. The scripture we talked about earlier this year, um, but that in, in Ephesians, I believe it's Ephesians 4. Everyone has a part. Everyone has a part of it. It may not be the same part, but everyone has a part. What is your part? 
Disciple making. Who who's the last disciple you brought forth? Who are you discipling? You know, we're all mandated to bring, make disciples. Who are you discipling? Meditation, a time of reflection. We've talked about that today. Reflection. Reflection. Where are you? Where are you? We need that time on a daily basis, not just at the end of the year, even though at the end of the year normally is the time where we re reflect and reassess our whole year, you know, before we go into the next year. We need to do that every day. God wants us to meditate on his word and to meditate, to think about what his word says and how to apply it in our day. And then lastly, the last discipline was fasting. Fasting. And we will get to do that uh, more so in 2021 as we do our 21 days in 21. And let me put that plug in right now. 21 and 21 every day. Pastor is going to ask you. He's asking you. He's pleading you. For 21 days, we're going to turn down one meal every single day. We're going to not eat during that meal, that time, time frame. Set the time. Don't just say, oh, well, I didn't eat lunch and it's an hour later. Now you're going to eat dinner <laughs> and eat for the rest of the day. You know, it's set a time. If, the, if you're, you're not eating your lunch, then you're not going to eat until this time. If you're not eating breakfast, I'm not eating until 12 o'clock. We're turning that down for 21 days. And for 21 days, we're going to meet. We're going to gather together and have 21 minutes of food that God is going to uh, impart into us during that time. So we're going to ask you to be faithful. I mean, there's no cop going to come to your house and knock on your door. But it, this is your opportunity as we reflect to put it in motion. So as I close, I want to remind you because this has been a lot of food. You see all that food? And that wasn't everything. There was so much stuff as I was going through my notes. You remember, you know, pastor always asks us, you know, where's your, where's your, uh, what's it called, pastor? Where's your ammo pouch? Where's your ammo pouch? He always say, where's your ammo pouch? Because you got to have an ammo pouch. How are you going to go back to the scripture? You ain't minimized it yet. How are you going to go back to the scripture if you don't know what it is and where it's at? Because you didn't write it down. Well, I went into my ammo pouch and pulled out all these messages. They're in my ammo pouch. I can go back from the beginning of the year. I missed a few when I was in kids church or when I was, you know, wherever, out of town. But I can go on my ammo pouch and just fall through. So there's a ton. I'm like, wow, he preached that? Wow, he preached that? And that doesn't even cover what the elders preached, what, what, what I shared. There was so much this year. So much. But let's answer the question. Where are you? Where are you? And as you answer that question, know that God already knows the answer. He's asking the question so you know. And that you make no more excuses. Be bold enough to stand up and say, I blew it. Or I wasted last year. Or I started out doing well and got distracted or got caught up in sin. Be honest to say, I did good in this area but I really need to come up in this area. Be honest. Be honest and know that Isaiah 5 and 7 says, because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a, like a stone, determined to do his will, and I know that I will not be put on shame. We serve a sovereign God, a sovereign God who can do what he wants, when he wants to do it, and he doesn't need our permission or our understanding. He's sovereign. He knows all. A lot of times, I've seen a message recently where somebody said, um, it was bad enough that God took so-and-so in this year now he's taking this person. He's going to have to reckon with me. And I was like, 
whoa, do you understand? He is God. You need to go read the conversation with Job. You know, when we get that, why me? Why me? Why me? Read about Job. I believe it was the 29th chapter. Where God just turned and said, who are you? <laughs> where were you when I formed the world? Where were you when I did this? When I put this in my, where were you? Where are you? To question God, the one who just say, and you're gone. The one who has all authority, all power, but yet, gives us love, grace, mercy, his tender loving care. This is our reflection time, our reflection moment. And we have to answer that question because he's calling out to us. He knows where we're at. He knows what we're doing, but he wants that conversation with you. Amen. Pastor. Amen. Amen. I'm not sure how to get you off of that pen, Pastor Debbie, where I can come up front. So you have probably come around and, and do that. Did not our hearts burn Amen. as the word of God was shared today Amen. by Pastor Debbie? What a reflection. Amen. She's going to help me out here in just a minute here. She's going to help you out. Appreciate that. But the word of God was delivered powerfully. Amen. As, can you just give God some praise right now? Let's just give him some praise right now. All over the all over United States, all over, all over Huntsville. Come on, let's give God some praise. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. You sent your word, and your word healed us and delivered us and saved us from all destruction. You sent your word. Father, we value your word. We value your word. We value this word. Come on, everybody. Do you value the word? Come on and give him some praise right now. Oh, that was one of the spiritual disciplines that we be praise and thanksgiving. Don't take for granted the word of God that was spoken on today. Let's not take for granted. Oh, thank you, those who are on today right now. Let's give him God some praise. Let's give God some praise for he sent his word. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. God spoke through the Holy Spirit today, through Pastor Debbie today, yes, and sent yes. us a right now word, a right now word, a word of reflection, a word of examination, a word of that we can really consider ourselves, Father, for you said it must begin with us first. Oh, where was it the ungodly and the sinner be come, be at, Father? You, you've shaken us up, Father. You arrested our spirits today yeah. so we can do reflection. And Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for the gathering of believers right now in the Branch Family Worship Center. Those who gathered on with us as guests, we're so grateful, so thankful for each one of you. Amen and amen and amen. Where are you? Where are you? That spoke directly to me. Where am I? It goes back to many months, many another year before we talked about measure up. It's time to measure ourselves to where we're at as it relates to the word of God that came forth today. I pray that you took copious notes today. And as Pastor Debbie said, put in your ammo pouch today. Word that was spoken, words of faith. Amen. Right now, I'm gonna um do an altar call for there are those who are today and Again, we never take it for granted for those who are joining with us. You know, the word of God is right now. The word of God, Jesus gave us a model. He, he taught, amen, he preached, and he healed. And right now, we're going to offer you an opportunity to, to give your life to Jesus Christ right now. Opportunity that you may give your life to Jesus Christ. Seems like I'm, I'm not still in the forefront here. We'll give you an opportunity to give your life to Christ. I'm going to give you, sir, ma'am. Young person, teenager, the word of God came forth today. And it was a, a question, in form of a question, where are you? Adam stands for man. Not just we're Adam, it's man. Man, where are you? Sister, woman, teenager, where are you right now? Where are you? Are you 
in a place, in the place, in the position. I'm gonna give you. The, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you four appeals. Four appeals. Right now, if you don't know Jesus Christ, I mean, know him. I mean, he knows you, but do you know him? He knows all about you. But do you know where you're at? If you're not in the place, if you haven't repented of your sins, today, right now, is the time to do it. Number one, repent of your sin and let, let God give you a brand new life. <laughs> let him give you a a change let him change your life right now only only god can change your life sir ma'am only god can change your life you can't change your life only god can change it. and he did it by sending his son jesus christ to die upon the cross and now you it's yours to receive what you see right now is your personal sin if that's you right now you can wave your hand you can give some emojis say i want to receive christ right now as my personal savior and number two you may have received christ at one time but you backslid as Pastor Debbie said, you're on the, on, on the fence. And we know who owns the fence. You need to come off that fence and get on the right side, yes. on the God side. Come home, come home and rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. Father, if that's you, if man or woman, boy, if that's you, repent and ask God to forgive you. For the Bible said in 1 John 1, 8, 9, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin if we sin. God will forgive you. Say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. I've sinned. I want to come home. He will forgive you right now. Will you pray that prayer? Is that you? Pray that prayer of repentance right now. And Jesus Christ will forgive you. He'll restore you back to your place. Number three. Say, Lord, Pastor, she, she preached about, Pastor David talked about the Holy Spirit being filled with the power. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit come upon you. Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. If that's you today. Say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to be filled with the Spirit. I pray right now that you lift your hands in and ask God to forgive you, fill, fill you, to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Fill you. Lord, fill me. Fill me. Fill me right now. I thank you right now. And last but not least, you may be in your home right now. And you may be in a situation where you've been locked up in captivity over an addiction over a weight, over a sin that's easily besetting you. I pray right now, you be loose right now. Stretch your hand forward and say, Father, I want to be free. I want to be free. For you say, whom the Son set free is free indeed. And right now, I believe to be, be free right now in Jesus' name. I'm free right now according to your word. And you sent your word today. And I grab hold of that word. Therefore, I'm free. I'm free right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I pray that you pray one of those prayers. We all can fall in one of those situations. Yeah. Amen. Amen.